Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Facebook. We also have um, our attendees in that are online through the Go ahead. I will speak up. Rachel, will you do the uh, roll call, please? I will. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Rachel Anger is here. Kathy Calhoun here. John Kalila. Present. Kenny Curley here. Pam Delabar. I'm here. Uh, Kathy Dunham here. George Eichenhauser here. Mark Hanna here. Yukiko Hayata here. Carol Krasnowski here. Rich Mastin here. Melanie Morgan here. Pam Moser here. Paula Noble here. Sharon Roy. Here. Michael Shelton. Here. Russell Webb. Here. Annette Wilson. Here. And then we have Elaine Tartaglia. Here. James Simbro. Here. Okay, Desiree Bobby. Oh, uh, Shelly Perkins. Here. And from the ID, we have uh, Matthew Wong. Here. Is uh, Eva Chen on the call? So everyone is present. Uh, I made a notation about Eva, and we have our forum. Okay, meeting is called to order. First item on the agenda is to approve the orders of the day, and I think we have some additions. Sharon, do you have an item you'd like to add? Yes, please. Um, I had a request last night from somebody to do a green summit. So, what are you doing? New business. Okay. Number 28. O open session, right, Sharon? Mm -hmm. Open session. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it'll be under new business item number 28. Okay. Melanie? The item on the judging program rules that Pam and I were supposed to work on last night, is that already on there or do we need to say that now? That's under unfinished business. Thank you. Just making sure. Sorry. Um, we also have no rules coming back, right? Under unfinished business? We do. I have a list. Okay. Does anybody else have any items they'd like to add today? We had pr proposal number 10. Proposal number 10. On the British short hair bell. <clears throat> and that yeah, is- that to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because otherwise I have I to- I found it and I was like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I do have. Is that going what on? What we work on? Unfinished business. Yeah, see, okay, Where you put that? Unfinished business. Okay. So, Annette, you will review that under unfinished business. Yeah. Okay. So and you have what you're looking for. Okay. What's that meaning? Rachel or um, Cassie. Did you find anything on the China thing? No. Um, we Cam just found where it was extended. Okay. Oh. You have it, right? The China thing? Know, well, no, I had it and my written notes. I need to check my um, transcript. Yeah. What, one of my notes that's already in here. <laughs> okay. I think George brought up yesterday something about China on the show license requirement of seven days. Uh, so we're trying to do some research on when that expires and locate it in the show rules. So that'll also be added today once we um, uh, can get that resolved. So we can have Ed do what he needs to do in finalizing the show rules. I believe that that's it. Um, can I have a motion to accept the orders? So as okay. And made the motion and George made the second. Any objections to the orders of the day? Seeing no objections, orders of the day are approved. Thank you. I think um, our first item, we are on item number 22, marketing committee. 
Desiree, please join us. So you have in front of you our report. Uh, I won't go over um, it in detail, um, but I'll just highlight some things and then of course be open for questions. Uh, first up is the Heather Smith and Branding Project, which is our main logo and submark development. So you can see the um, full color logo variations. The first one in the report is the official logos uh, with the cat and see if I get black, but you can see this here is the association on the right. And those, I believe, the one that is officially being trademarked is the first one. Is that correct, Rich? Not the third one. So we are, we are trademarking um, the one on the left, and also on the second page, the one on the left. And then we are also um, registering the slogan, we know cats. That's what's in the process of being registered. So uh, we are developing a guide that will help explain to everyone when we use the horizontal version or what we call the staffed version uh, versus the submark. Um, also, they do come in different colors. Uh, we have um, a gray scale, we have a solid black, we have a white that's also known as a uh, blackout, and, um, and then there's a partial color. So the um, guidelines that we're going to be developing, well, they're developed, we're just, we're, we're Bridging them for um, different groups or, or clubs that you might not want to see all the groups. Um, so, is there any questions about the main group? Um, so, the next up is um, other CFA logos. Um, I'm not sure how many of you were in 2000, it was the 2018 CFA Pediatric session where we showed marketing showed all of the logos being used for CFA on, on the screen and it was quite shocking. There's probably maybe 21, 20 different, at least 20 different logos where every program, every committee, every region, like many different logos, even even like the badges for pattern mm -hmm. events and things like that. And there's really no consistency. So we started this idea even back then. Um, and then we realized that we really need to look at the whole CFA brand, but even go back further before we could help unify all of the logos of the organization. So part of the branding project is really building the system. So um, instead of just having just a logo for CFA, our system will act as like a graphical framework uh, for all of the different situations in, in CFA. Uh, so we started here with um, just a handful of programs that we know have um, the public has their eyes on them. There may be some programs and committees within CFA that no one really uses because it's internal working, so they might not need their own logo. Um, but we, again, we just started with the four that we know do uh, the ambassadors, the junior financiers, mentors. So with the with this the program system, they um, have their own color identity. They also have the different uh, colors: the grayscale, the black, the blackout, and partial color as well. That I didn't put them here. Um, so they'll work with, like for instance, ambassadors. Um, she's making some beautiful uh, cloths. And so we worked with her on what colors would look good in her fabric. So, um, and then, so these are the colors. So as we create more of them, everyone will get to see the colors. So uh, we've been having internal conversation, the marketing uh, committee, between Ellen and Mark, myself and Ellen, about what other 
programs or part of CFA really should have their own identity. Um, another thing to think about, uh, in addition to, to committees and programs, is, for instance, um, like flyers, show flyers, right? They have the CFA logo on them, but should it be just the CFA logo or should it say CFA license show? So, so we're looking at the different things in CFA that may need some additional text in your own document. So we're open to suggestions if you're a committee chair um, or have a program and you think that instead of just using, you know, writing your name in fonts, so you want to talk about that, we'd like to hear from you and start having that conversation. But we need to do identity. Is there any questions about Uh, next is the the photography project. We can have. Um, this started <laughs> as um, a way to kind of shift CFA's um, visual presence of usually just pictures of you know, show cats to something that um, evoked more emotion, which of course would be humans and humans touching cats and loving cats and things like that. So uh, we to give you a little history on our photographer, Sarah Baker. Um, I was on Instagram um, stalking people who take pictures at CFA shows, to see if I get a good one. And I found these beautiful photographs taken at Baltimore, I think it was maybe 2017. So I contacted her um, on Instagram and I said, I love your photos of cat shows, that you're taking at cat shows. And she's actually a photographer for the Center of Exploited and Infant Children. So as you can imagine, she really knows how to capture emotion. Um, so back in, it was like 2018, 19, whenever COVID started, we started, we discussed meeting at Crab and Mallet and um, doing a photo shoot at the same to see what it would be like. And then it was like the week before COVID hit or COVID hit back town and we couldn't have an event. So we had to cancel. So two, two years later, anyway, 2021, we ended up going to, to Kremlin. Um, but we um, started taking pictures, or she started taking pictures of the people um, at the show. And it was so successful. It was so wonderful. Not only really the pictures beautiful, but the people involved in the photo shoots have so much fun and there's so much pride and they feel so good about CFA wanting them to be part of our overall marketing and, and and it's just a wonderful thing. I don't know if any of you have been involved in the photo shoot, but you can attest to her just how fun they are. So um Margaret <coughs> suggested, well, you know, you're doing events up here, you better get out to the West Coast. So we went out to the West Coast of Coke Canyon. And then then we realized oh, God, with these many of these we really need to make sure we hit every region in these favor. Uh, so now we have hit um all regions except one in six. So we do want to come to six, and we do want to come to one. Uh, we learned from in San Diego this past weekend that probably a huge show doesn't work very well. Um, <laughs> at Crab and Mallet, it worked really well. Well, because Mark was there too, dragging people into our booth, so that's not for you. Um, but you know, when there's such a huge gate, it's it's just not possible to get people away from from their bench and, and come to us. So. So I'll be looking um, for some events that you feel may have a high, may not be a huge date. I mean, they can, but um, a high. Um, so we're committed to doing one and um, six. We uh, did reach, we actually hired a photographer for region nine to do a shoot in Italy. Um, and maybe it was a small show. We didn't have, there's only 17 sessions there. So we still would like to hit Europe. Um, a nice show that has a nice count, Pam. So if you can, if you let us know. We were faking maybe this show yeah, again. I don't know if that's one of the bigger ones, but we can talk about that offline. Uh, and then for IBD, we still work to get ID in China. And I'm hoping maybe um, we can find a photographer out there um, that can work with us. Uh, but anyway, so um, you're, you're seeing the photos that we're using, you're seeing them now on. Um, many of our posts on social media. You're seeing uh, some banners. You'll see some on the website, um, on our Facebook group. 
Uh, every two weeks, we highlight the CFA fancier, the photographer that the photography that you see used in the IM CFA um, campaign is again that's the photography from Sarah goes a different reading from our Any questions about these steps? Yeah. Like what we're trying to do also is incorporate diversity in these pictures. Um, so there's not just all white ones. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I keep a chart of of um, the the region, the gender, um, the cat, if what what breed. So I have a list of different things. Um, and then um, the website projects. So uh, the website is we're at a point where uh, we now have. I'm pretty sure that the navigation is pretty cleaned up, um, but we're still meeting with that about that internally. The design of it will be reviewed in uh, executive session, and it's so nice. <laughs> it's really, really nice. So uh, we're excited to show that to you uh, later today. Um, it's going to have, of course, improved navigation. A beautiful design, more pictures of you know photography we're using and lifestyle images of people with cats. Uh, there'll be some new tools. There'll be a resource center for um, for data. There'll be um, a blog. Many many new things. We'll just be going with that. It's, it's always the content. Oh, of course, yes, yeah. yeah. We're trying to update the content. We're reviewing to make sure that what's there is current and is still needed. There's some of these pages were put up there 25 years ago and no longer be needed. So we're going to go through every page and make sure that it's current information and needed information. So we're going to cut down on that. What do you think? Do you have a number for how many there are now? Uh, I think there's 270 ish pages now. Uh, probably, probably a less than half of that. Um, and the reason is we're going to have a resources section. That will be filterable. So if you know that you want um, information on cavalry design or something, you'll be able to pinpoint that. Um, and it won't be an actual you know, page, it'll be kind of like an article. Um, and then there's still be search as well. And a lot of those pages will be new to the Melody? Yeah, um, and just to follow up a little bit on, on what Mark and Desiree are talking about um, for those people who are, are listening in. On the website, um, we're, we're very aware that there are, are two very different audiences, both our existing exhibitors who need that resource page and a dedicated area to be able to go into and find everything they need kind of on one stop shopping. And then our general perception for the public and, and, and Desiree and Atomic Wash are doing a really good job, I think, of identifying that and streamlining the process. So we, we are really plan on, on addressing that concern that we've heard from so many people about the difficulty of finding all what we used to have on the old exhibitors page. So is there any other questions about the web? And we'll be talking more about it in, in greater depth as the time goes by right now. Just approaching um, the, the the process where we can but you know we'll, we'll talk about it. Desiree. <laughs> Are you far enough along to give us an estimated date as to when the website will roll out? I would say that it will be in 2023. Great. Um, we're in the content review stage right now. There's so much content and we're trying to determine which, if any, could be that we currently have can be rolled out with the new site and then change, for instance, the breed pages. Those are all um, written in a, in a particular way. Um, we're trying to, so we're, we're inventorying everything and determining, well, do we want to wait until the new content is written from those, for those pages and roll up, or would it be acceptable to have that, that read information rolled out and then change later. So all of that's going to determine what that will But we're committed to two for 2024. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this
the next thing up is the Facebook discussion group. Uh, I have it on my report, um, but it is, I don't know if it really belongs to marketing specifically, but because I've been um, tasked with the building it and maintaining it and writing content for it. Um, we have over 3,000 members now, so it, it grew very fast. Um, it's a great way for CFA to put out information in the same way that we're putting out um, information in, in the newsletter and announcements. And it's a nice way for um, people to support each other. Um, we see a lot of readers coming in that might not be part of like the core group of CFA that's you know showing and things like that. And, and we're hoping that our messaging will help encourage more participants. Thank you very much. Thank you, Desiree. Colleen? This isn't a question, it just seems like a good time to mention to every all board members that you've seen a couple of us wearing CFA apparel and that every board member is um, entitled to one complimentary piece. So you don't have to tell me now, but if you want a tunic, you want a blazer, you want a men's shirt, Mark has been wearing, he wore one yesterday. But um, just let me know, and we'll get that order for you and, and get it shipped out here. Okay. Thank you, Desiree. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> item number 23, IT. Tim, will you join us at the table? <laughs> James, go uh, ahead. Nothing more to add from the report. Things are continuing to track on schedule for the system update, and we're uh, keeping an eye on the budget on that. Any questions about anything in the report? System update time schedule? Uh, we're still looking at August. This year. Of this year. That includes the launch of the new ETAP uh, website with enhanced features such as being able to do for your sister ship. Great. And a lot of other features. Pam Mosier. Yeah, there's one on um, genetics. It's now up to 165,000. How much higher is that going to go? We don't anticipate it you know, a lot more. You know, there's probably several thousand dollars worth of more work to do, especially in those the good. And as I mentioned in the report, um, if we were trying to integrate this into our existing ECAT page right now, it would cost us. Probably another five or five thousand dollars just to do that. That's why we're we think it's a better idea to launch it with the new recap and email because that cost is already accounted for. That we get. So there's no additional cost cost to insert genetic into the email. So. And what about the people record consolidation? Um, it says September. Is that on schedule? Uh, I think that was a complete date. Yeah, yeah, complete date, right. It was it was complete. Oh, it's 2022. I'm sorry. Yeah, that will probably come off there now. Okay. We left all Since your Pam brought that one up, did that stay within budget? I believe so. Okay. Less than budget? I believe so. We tell you about that how much. If you could look into that and let us know, that'd be great. Any other questions for James? Tim, do you have any updates on some of the projects you're working on? Okay. Well, that was. <laughs> James, anything else? No. We'll keep at it and thank you. Page. Item number 24, show scheduling issue. Mike Shelton, Pam Mosier. Do you want me to go first? Sure. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. Of course, I don't see that where um, 
Las Vegas should be actually opposing this together. because of a number of different reasons. First of all, it's on a different weekend, not on the same weekend, not in the same region. They're over 500 miles apart. Um, the bigger problem for Vegas is that they've got three other shows against them the same weekend. I don't think the show before is going to be their issue. Um, also, Vegas is a destination site. I mean, that's where people go. They like to gamble down there. So a show in Poppy State the weekend before is not going to hurt them, I don't think. Um, I do understand that some of the problems with the Vegas show is, is that their hotel rates are very high. And that could be hurting them. Not sure. Um, and then lastly, it's not the count that's going to make the difference. It's who you get through the gate. That's where you're going to make the money. So it's not about the count as far as I'm concerned. So I, I, I think the Poppy State should be able to put on their show. Okay, Mike? Yeah, I mean, Las Vegas' main concern is that they do share something of a common exhibitor base, especially exhibitors in Southern California, who it's a reasonable drive to Northern California and a reasonable drive to Vegas. And they're concerned that some of those people may decide to go only one show instead of both. And that some of those may then be siphoned off to Poppy State who would have otherwise gone to Las Vegas. That's their primary area of concern. Okay, so are you making a motion to for the board not to approve Pam's region show? Is that how this should be done? Or, or well, should Pam make a motion to accept it? I'm not sure. It no, it, Poppy State is the new show. Vegas was already on the schedule. Normally how it's done is the regional directors work together on it. And if they can't agree, it comes <laughs> to the board. And then we make a decision. So that's that's usually how it happens. And I, I will make that motion reserving the right to vote now. It should be stated in the schedule. Right. I'm, well, sure the yeah. So Pam, you <laughs> make the motion to the that, that Poppy State is allowed to have their show the weekend before Las Vegas. I, I, I disagree because of the fact that a time defeats the motion. Uh -huh. And so the status quo should be that we accept. So I think the motion should be to cancel. So that it takes a majority to cancel rather than it takes a majority to not oh. cancel. But the show is not licensed. I'm just saying, if, if the vote is should Poppy State have a, a show or not, if, if it's put in the form of allow Poppy State to have the show, it takes a majority for that to happen. A tie loses. If the motion is to not allow Poppy State, it takes a majority to stop it, and a tie loses. So essentially, what you're doing is you're establishing who has the burden of proof. And I think the burden of proof should be on those opposing having a show. Pam, I'm, fine. I'm fine with it either way. Pam Dalabar, you had your hand up. What were you going to say? I was going to say that usually the more effective motions are stated in the positive with the right to vote against. Um, George just got all legal very early. <laughs> 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 Kenny, Kenny, you had your hand up too. Oh, I, I know. I they answered my question. It's not licensed yet, so this basically is just approval of the license or not license. George, go ahead. Yeah. And whichever way you move it, I'd like to just discuss this on a subsequent basis. I understand Las Vegas is concerned. Um, there are some places, Los Angeles, that if you put on a show, you can rely on your local exhibitor base to fill your show. Las Vegas is surrounded by a lot of desert. Um, they're, they're a destination, so they heavily depend on bringing people in from other areas. So I can understand their sensitivity, to this, but it doesn't change the fact that it's a different weekend and it's 500 miles away. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does Mike and Pam want to proceed with this? Yeah, I, I don't I think, think so either. <laughs> I mean, a motion has been made in second. Let's go. Since, 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 since Las Vegas. Vegas. On which one? No, which one? Mike yeah. or on Mike? Mike's to block the poppy state. I will make a motion that we 
not approve Poppy State okay. based on Las Vegas' objection, reserving the right to vote no. I'm um, second to reserve the right. Okay, so Mike and George. All right, further discussion? Okay, so in that selection, so how do you vote if you want to allow Poppy State? You vote. The no, vote is a no. motion is to block Poppy State. So if you don't want to block Poppy State, you vote on No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, further, Kenny? Yeah, very quickly. They're going to come to the show in Plant City, Florida, anyway. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> do, do you want to amend your motion to <laughs> do anything about it? I'm already oh, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Any further comments? All right. All those in favor to block. The Poppy State show. Raise your hand. I guess you should have gone the other route then. All right. <laughs> Any abstentions? All right. Then I'll call the vote. All those in favor, raise your hand. No, or no. opposed. All those opposed, okay. raise your hand. Thank you, George. <laughs> Russell Webb, Kathy Calhoun, Melanie Morgan, John Kalilla, Sharon Roy, George Eigenhauser, Annette Wilson. Oh, you have to abstain? Okay. Mark Hannon, Paula Noble, Kathy Dunham, Carol Krasnowski, Kenny Curley, Pam Delavar. Okay. All those abstaining, so I can call you Rachel Anger, Mike Shelton, <clears throat> Pam Mosier. Uh, let's see. What did Yokiko do? <laughs> Yokiko, are you in favor? Yes. I'm favorite. She's in favor. Thank you. So she's, she's the so one, yes. Oh, are, you, are you opposed? No. I said yes. Okay. Ask if she wants to block. Yo, Kiko, do you want to block the show from happening? Uh, maybe. Uh, I just don't know, you know. I haven't decided, so maybe uh, I'm, I'm, I'm staying, maybe. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the zero yes votes, four. Uh, sorry, 13 no votes, four abstentions. Okay, motion fails. <clears throat> Moving on to the next. Ali? Just wanted to mention real quick, going back to the IT report, you asked about the spend to date on the people record. Yeah. Um, so far, the cost has been twenty three thousand one hundred and forty. Don't anticipate we'll have any more, but if there is, it's minimal and it certainly is well under the budget of forty five thousand. Thank you for sharing that. All right, <clears throat> we are moving into item number twenty five. I just have a quick question. I raised my hand, Rich. Oh, I'm sorry, Shelly, go ahead. That's okay. Do you need to actually approve that show now or license or is it automatic? Does anybody know? It should be automatic. They should just be able to license. Yeah. License it. I'm hearing everybody saying it should be automatic. The club can go ahead and proceed with the license. Okay, thank you. Okay. Item number 25, Kathy Dunham. Uh, thank you. Um, we have a situation in region six. Uh, it is documented here. There are two other pieces of information that may be relevant to your decision. One is that this cat also had an opportunity to attend a region six show in May of 2022. And the cat is also a regional winner as a ticket. Um, I will make this motion to grant an exception to Article 36, Number 4, uh, with the right to abstain on the vote. Thank you, Thank you Kenny. Discussion? George? I'm normally a no on these. I, I don't like to 
to go around the rules, especially when it has either residency issues or um, not showing in your own region issues. But I've got to say, if this cat died in August and is still in line for a championship award, that must have been a hell of a nice cat. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm serious. I'm impressed by that. And I'm actually inclined to vote yes on this. Uh, although I don't like to make these exceptions. This is such an extraordinary circumstance, and it must have been a truly extraordinary cat that I'm comfortable making an exception in this. Kathy Collins. I am extremely sympathetic to this person. This is a horrible, horrible thing to occur. But I would ask Kathy Dunham, and after I get to see how many shows occurred in the Midwest region, and that that cat um, participated in, or how many shows it participated in, period. Um, well, I'm very empathetic, but the cat has a regional win. As a kitten, you were only going to have one RW in your in the historical records, no matter what. If this cat is not allowed to have a uh, a regional, if it is allowed a regional win, the cat that is 26th in the region now remains 26th in the region. If the cat is not allowed to be considered as for regional win for in championship. Whatever that cat, the, the top twenty-five will, will, you know, be giving their award. So it's it's while I'm sympathetic, um, it's not going to make a difference in the title for the cat. It's already got a regional win, and that cat that would have been, gotten a regional win in twenty-sixth position will not. So as awful as this is, and as awful as this sounds, I cannot support. Further discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Rachel Anger, Pam Bellabar, Mike Shelton, Kenny Curley, George Eigenhauser. All those opposed, raise your hand. Carol Krasnodowski, Paula Noble, Mark Hannon, Pam Mosier, Annette Wilson, Sharon Roy, John Kalila, Melanie Morgan, Kathy Calhoun, Russell Webb, <clears throat> also, uh, Yukiko. Thank you, uh, Yukiko. Abstentions, raise your hand. Kathy Dunham. Go ahead, Rachel. Thank you. Um, Sharon, were you uh, a no vote on that? Yes. Oh, thank you. That's five yes votes, 11 no votes, one abstention. Motion fails. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Moving on to unfinished business. And I know we have a fair amount. Rachel, I don't know what you wanna do first. I have, um, show rule proposal number 11 to extend the show license late fee exceptions for regions eight and nine currently in place through the end of the the 2023-24 show season shows will be licensed up to 30 days before the opening day of the show without any penalty ed join us at the table please uh, and this was about a sunset date in china Okay. Ed, do you want to? After doing some research last night, I could not find either in the show rules or in the agenda for the last couple of years any exception to China. The only exception shows up in the agenda for the last two years. And for the current season, it's for regions eight and nine, and that was what the board was voting on yesterday. And Pam Delabar, you might have I, something in your notes. I looked through the notes for the past, actually, two years mm -hmm. and could find nothing. Okay. But I still remember in my mind the discussions that we had I do too. because of places in China that were opening, closing, and it was on such a quick basis. Um, right. I We did it. I just cannot find it in my notes. Yeah. Kathy Calhoun. 
Yeah, I, I recall as well the discussion and the the need for just establishing a new rule for China because of this ongoing issue, not only with with COVID, with NGOs, and with the clubs being able to hold some information close to the vest because of other <clears throat> issues. I can't find it. I've gone back in in uh, the forum, to, and I cannot find anything there. But I certainly think that at this point we can correct that. George, and I remember, which is why I brought up the issue in the first place. Um, I know we did something. The problem is, and I'm going to criticize the board for this. At one point, we were having so damn many meetings every month. And we were bringing up every kind of issue at every meeting. There was no rhyme or reason to it that we just lost track of some of these things. We sure. created policies that are in the board minutes from some telephone conference somewhere, but don't appear anywhere else. That's why we can't find them in the rules and we can't find them on the agenda. We have to be cleaner about our process so we don't have things like this that we're struggling to find what we did. And that's on us. But I agree that. Regardless of what we did in the past, a majority of this board can do it now. So if we haven't done it or we can't find out where we did it, let's just do it. I have I have Matthew who's raised his hand. So Matthew, do you recall anything on this? Yes, yes, I, I definitely recall. Uh, basically, it, it was uh, mainly because uh, it, at the time that uh, it was uh, Chongqing where the NGO only had one month filing. So uh, we only have very few days to turn around. Uh, now I think the situation is better. So um, you know we can definitely consider uh, going back to uh, 30 days. Um, of course, when there are emergency, we could still ask for special. But I think looking at uh, with John and Wayne and Kathy, we all see the application of show dates uh, from various participants. They are now planning basically a couple of months ahead. So uh, I think George is right. I mean, uh, uh, because seven days clearly create a lot of stress to central office. So I think uh, we can revisit and uh, reset a date. Uh, I think 30 days is um, pretty fair. Thank you, Matthew. John and Kathy, are you in agreement? 30 days we can and then work off in emergencies, Kathy? I would be more comfortable with 14 days. Me too, that's what I think. Matthew, did you hear Kathy? Yes, yes, 14 is great, yeah. Okay, so you're in agreement? Yes, yes, in agreement. Okay, so then um, uh, the motion for the show rule, we can make it 14 days for China and then the board will have to approve that. My question for the board is, is if we can make this Agenda that would be in effect for the next show season, or would you make this a permanent part of the show? Kathy, a permanent part of the show. I can go back to work on that and bring it back at the end of the closed session. Okay. And I'll be available for any questions. I won't worry anywhere. Okay. All right. Now, do we have more show rules, Ed? We do. Um, there was one agenda that was brought forth yesterday. Um, essentially, when no show takes place in a kittens region division of residence during the four months of eligibility, there's currently an, an agenda that allows the owner to apply for a special exception. The discussion yesterday was to make this permanent and to do away with the need for a request that we just find out with that. Drafted something up last night. It's adding paragraph 4.1 to the National Regional Divisional Assignment portion of Article 26. And the wording is when no show takes place in a kittens region, division, or area of residence during the kittens four months of eligibility. An exception to the residency requirement for the kitten class will be granted. And Carol, is that your motion? Yes, that would be my motion. In four seconds. Okay. Great. Is there any questions or discussion on that? Show rule. Any objections? <clears throat> Seeing no objection, that motion passes unanimously. 
Ed? A follow-up motion, um, which is simply to delete what you passed yesterday as a agenda, saying roughly the same thing. So moved. All right, let me, un let me understand it. We're deleting what we did yesterday? Well, you passed an agenda yesterday, which would only be in effect for the 23, 24 short season. Okay. You no longer need that agenda because we just passed the permit and changed it. So mm. yeah, we're replacing our temporary permit. Okay. Okay. Well, so, motion. all right, second. second. Carol, okay. All right, any discussion or questions? Any objections? Seeing no objections, that post motion passes <laughs> unanimously. Ed? That's all I have. That's all of them? <clears throat> we're the only two that were immediate. Okay. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Then um, we'll have you come back after closed session to wrap up the um, the China. In uh, okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll honor. All right. Additional unfinished business. Um, I believe we had a change. Uh, um to come back from Annette regarding the optional two-year free council membership. The two-year, we did it. Okay, I, I had a note in my uh, new business. So oh, we, I think we went back and forth network. on that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so next was the uh, number 10 on the British short hair ballot regarding the uh, language that was omitted from the proposal um, about using the long hair British in uh, other breeds, registering them only for breeding and other breeds. And we were supposed to get language from the breed council secretary. And that? Yeah, I did get uh, language from the uh, email, and then I made up some other things that I thought sounded better, but then. She suggested a way to reword it that I with the, the using the parentheses from the English secretary. She's the council secretary. So it was okay. Um, this is uh, instead of uh, typo thing in, in proposal number 10, except registration only of long hair British short hairs, parentheses, only for use as outcrosses in accepted non British short hair breeding programs, close parentheses. With specific registration codes to indicate that they are long hairs or have long hairs in the five generations behind. And that's your motion. That's my motion. Okay. Discussion or questions? Any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Um, I had a note that there was uh, something in the judging program rule 12, uh, paragraph one, subparagraph C about approved guest judges. Yes, it's actually a for fun shows. Um, and Pam and I worked on that last night. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Um, <laughs> teamwork makes the dream work, right? Um, we're going to make 12.1 C. 12.2 because there is no 12.2 in here anymore. Um, number one will now read fun shows will not be approved for shows conducted by or in conjunction with FFF or ICE. Number three will become two and I'll read it just so that it's here. Um, and we have the whole 12.2 fun show judging will not be approved if FFF or ICE judges are also officiating. <laughs> Number four will become three. No, I strike that, Rachel, sorry. Two is gone. Um, three will become two, and that reads, fun show judging will not be approved as an in-conjunction show sharing a show hall or second day at the same venue where an ICE or FFF show occurred. Mm -hmm. And number four becomes three, and that reads, associate judges of single specialties may judge all types of cats at a fun show. You need me to read the whole thing again, or you got it? Yeah. Thank you. 
the rationale behind that is um, on the shows to be uh, allowed to be fun shows. Um, I would hate to have to see the board have to come anytime we were going to do a 4 H show, for example. Um, I'm speaking as a judge and I'm not trying to be, you know, holier now over it, but CFA judges are really well thought of, especially in, in handling. And we know cats. Uh, we should allow our judges to go out and share this information, especially if we're going to be able to, to uh, uh, bring more people into the fancy and get a chance to raise uh, uh, our level of registrations and, and other uh, products. Uh, so our judges are ambassadors and they're, they're good um, examples of the cat fancy. So we don't want to um, hold back our judges for bona fide uh, exercises, programs, or whatever, especially with these fun shows. And some of our, our um, larger organizations within, within like the WCC, we have very large independent clubs throughout the world. Um, why put why not allow our judges to to spread the word, get out there and, and do some little evangelizing uh, for CFA uh, on these events? That pretty much what you yeah okay. So that's our motion. I'll second. Thank you. So was that all that needed to be corrected? Correct. That was just that just nothing that. else because I know you had identified a number of areas we fixed those we you, fixed them yesterday but they don't need board approval or no we get it okay okay great okay any questions or discussion any objections to the changes seeing no objection motion passes unanimously great okay. that was all the unfinished business i had uh, notations of okay thank you Moving on to other committees. Any other committees? I'm going to, I was going to bring mine at the end because it came up from the bottom. Okay. New business. I think we got a bit of new business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. First thing on new business is show date request. <clears throat> and me, okay, John. What happened is the uh, due to the change of staff because of COVID, they have new people working at the facility and uh, they rented a place to a different group of people. So the club request to move the show from the third weekend in April to the fourth weekend just for one year only. So have and you then go back to the third weekend after that? So did you receive approval from the I received no approval from the region one. Okay. So there are other shows that weekend? Yeah. That, that, this show is 530 miles from, from this show. That was my next question. How far is it? Okay. Uh, how about the other adjoining region? I did not receive response from 706 on that one. Okay. Can we hear from Kenny? I'm going to have to abstain because I'm judging, but I have three clubs involved for that. That show in Oaks. These are three struggling clubs are trying to put on a successful show. I understand, John. I like some Connecticut, but I just got to There's way too many yeah. people. But uh, anyway, it's hard for me to support this, even though we're 500 miles apart. So these guys go out from the same river base. When you guys have a show, they don't come to my great plant city show. <laughs> You're working it today. I'm just doing a little advertising. But so um, I want everybody to have a successful show. And it's just going to be a little bit tough to do that. But you're well well within your rights. And if the board approves it, they approve it. I just thought I asked. You well, know. you just did. <laughs> George? I didn't hear a second. I second it out. Okay, thank you. Um, Sharon? Yeah, this group, 
This group, it is three clubs. They've been looking for a really long time for a show day. Finally found a fifth weekend. We also had issues in our own region with Sign of the Cat wanting to change their weekend. They're spending a lot of money at Oaks, and it is still the same exhibitor base. Truly, it is. You know, even if it's 500 miles, they're drawing from that whole mid-Atlantic region and Ohio. I just couldn't. I just can't do it to these three clubs with their first show. Okay. Kathy Dunham, you want to speak on this? Um, I am fine with it. I mean, I really think this is an issue between four and one. Uh, reason six doesn't have a show that weekend. My show is the following weekend because there's five weekends in, in the month. So I don't have a problem with it, but it really, I understand Sharon's concern. Okay. Additional questions for John or Sharon? Any comments? Okay, I'm going to call for the. Uh, uh, what's, what's the motion? The motion yeah. is to allow the Cincinnati Cat Club Region 4 to hold a show on April 22, 23, 2023 in Hamilton, Ohio for only one year. That's the motion. Got a, oh, Pam. Sorry, I've got a question. John, how many shows has Cincinnati put on during this show season? This will be the second one, but the, the traditional, they have two traditional, they just established a brand new traditional date on Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. This is the other one, that this is the traditional date for years, for the third weekend. So the traditional date they used to have like in January. No, 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 no. They don't. Cincinnati doesn't have it. Cincinnati has I a remember Nancy place. Davis putting those shows on. I know. I, yeah. I know. All the parties at the yeah. That's a different club, I think. Anyway, it's the traditional date is the third weekend. They then they recently started having a Thanksgiving weekend show and they established and they put on two two years in a row. So they have a show Thanksgiving weekend traditional date now established. Mm -hmm. But this is the the other established date that they have had the show third weekend for years. But like I said, because people changing people, they rented the show hall. This happened to a lot of clubs, mm -hmm. unfortunately, with COVID, changing staff, people don't work. Pam Mosier. Okay, I'm confused. I'm sorry. So the other club is that in your region, Sharon? It is, and what they took was there's five weekends in April, so they took a weekend that wasn't you know, assigned to anybody. Okay, so so wait a minute. So is the show that is in your region, is it been there the whole time or no? Which one? The what one that Sharon's region. Sharon's region moved to the fifth weekend. Yeah, they, they should oh, have moved okay, to the fifth okay, weekend. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It was on this weekend, but she moved it because there are five weekends. So the weekend that John wants is the weekend prior, right? Yeah, there's three the shows that weekend. weekend. There's one in region six. There's one in region seven, and then the one we just discussed down in California. Really. That would be, oh, because it's a fifth, because the, technically the 22nd and 23rd is the fifth weekend. Right. It's the fifth weekend. Of the, but it's not on the same weekend still, the one you have. It's the new, it's right. yours is on the weekend after, right? No. No. Well, yours is normally the fourth weekend, but this right. year it's the fifth. It's the fifth weekend. Right. This right. is the fourth weekend. Right. So Sharon this year does not have a show this weekend. That's not true. There's Las Vegas this weekend, there's Florida this weekend, and then we're going to reach this. Springfield. Springfield. Okay. And so and so this could be because actually too. this weekend the only two shows would be John's show and the show at Poppy State. No, no, there's one in region one. There's one in region one. There's one in region one. There would be a we have two one in region one. Okay. And in Oaks, Pennsylvania. We're talking about the weekend of October. No, you're not. No, it's not. It's Vegas is at the end of the month, and we're yeah, that right. great plant city show. <laughs> That's the same weekend. Yes. Sharon. Okay, so they, it's it's the Turkish Angora and the Ragamuffin Club, and there's also some other club that's actually part of your region. Club. <laughs> They're putting a show on in Oaks. They've been looking for a date. They don't want to run a regular show. There was a fifth weekend. So they took 
The fifth weekend is technically the fourth weekend. They took it. They're spending a lot of money. They're doing a lot of advertising, but they do, they really do use the same exhibitor base. Even though it's 500 miles, that's a big group of people in that whole area. Sharon, split. what is the date? Yeah, well, we need to know the date. Second and 23rd. You, you keep saying the fifth weekend, and that is well, the, the fourth weekend. Well, the fifth weekend is signed at the cap. Okay, because okay. we need to get that organized. So, okay. so the exactly show in Oaks, weekend. the act, exactly the show right. in Oaks is on the twenty second and twenty third. Okay, right. and John, the show for Cincinnati is twenty second, twenty second, twenty third. Yeah, because okay. the facility they do. Okay, Melanie, you had your hand up. You just we clarified fixed it. What I was okay, say. okay, <laughs> Sorry. Annette. Uh, if if the sign of the cat had not moved to the last weekend, I'm going to call it. Would it then have an issue being up against? Absolutely. Cincy? And has the Cincy show ever been this weekend before, John? No. no. Has it been in April? It's been, it's been always been the third weekend, but this the time third. it's been the, the fourth weekend. And it's five the weekends third, in April. I, I, I get that. But is the third weekend not available? They don't have the show hall. They rented a facility that the show hall somebody else. Carol? Are there any other shows? On the twenty second, twenty third, other than uh, not on the one I know. I think they just only two. I think. Poppy Day. Poppy Day. Yeah, Poppy Day. Poppy Day. Yeah. Okay, so that makes. Yeah. 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 But that's way out on the west side. Yeah. 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 But the exhibitor base is the same. Yeah. Yeah. And and John, earlier I heard you say Cincinnati has two shows per year. One now in they November do. Now they do. and one in April. Now they do. After the, the Thanksgiving show this uh, last year, they have now two shows. And they can't get a show hall on their traditional third weekend. Yes. And that's why you're asking for this request. Yes, they rented it to somebody else. Okay. And that show hall is available for, the whole week, for that weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any additional questions? How about additional comments? Do you have anything else you want to add? No. All right, I'm going to call for the vote on this. All those in favor to allow Cincinnati have the show, raise your hand. Kathy Calhoun, John Kalilla, George Eigenhauser, Mike Shelton. Okay, lower your hand. All those opposed, raise your hand. Car <laughs> Carol Krasnowski, Mark Hannon. <laughs> Sharon, you're Are you opposed. The show? We're opposed to that. Are you judging the show? No. Okay. Abstention. Uh -huh. uh, all those. Okay, I need to find out what your key goes. All right. <laughs> She's not. She's not. Okay. So for me. Yukiko, are you in favor of this motion or opposed or an abstention? Oh. I don't know. I, I, I uh, agree. You know. You agree. Yes. Yes. All right. So you're a yes. Yes. Understand. Okay. Okay. All the abstentions. Raise your hand. Rachel Anger, Pam Delabar, Kenny Curley, Kathy Dunham, Paula Noble, Pam Mosier, Annette Wilson, Melanie Morgan, Russell Webb. Okay, Rachel. Five yes votes, three no votes, nine abstentions. Motion passes. So they get to have the show. They get to have the show. Thank you. Yeah, five three. <clears throat> but as George says, abstentions one and that and again. But just, okay, uh, continue with new business, Rachel. Uh, we have a <laughs> new business item for open session from Pam, which will come up later. But that is our only uh, oh, Sharon, other new business item. For executive session, right? Right. Pam's new business. Sharon, has a new Sharon business. you've got a new business. I, I had an um, email last night, and this is going to be really quick. Um, Great Lakes, Great Maine, who's running a show Labor Day weekend 2023. 
wants to be approved to have a um, breed summit, much like what the Egyptian mouse have, so that all the cats, all the main coons are called up and all the wings at the same time. Doesn't affect scoring or anything else. And so they're gonna judge them according to show rules and then also do a top three to five main coons depending on how they are. So it's just a, a straight breed summit. George? What's the entry difference between three and five? Um, Hang top five breed wins on each class, then award a top three to five Maine Coons overall, comparing all three classes. So they want to do the top five Maine Coons in each class and then top three overall. So do you have the mark? Not the mark. Yeah, no, but it's very much like what the Egyptian mounts do. Yes. Okay, Sharon. We, we need we need a motion. What is oh. the motion? The motion is to allow Great Lakes Maine. Great, Great Lakes Great Mains to do a breed <laughs> summit at their Labor Day show for Maine Coons. For Maine Coons. Okay. Second. Carol Kuznowski, second. What? Oh. I'm Go sorry. Ahead. What's the location? Columbus. Carol. Or did you have your hand up? No. Aline? I just have a question of clarification. You said there's no additional scoring? No additional scoring. Or grand points or national. Oh, no. no. Okay, no. Thank you. <clears throat> Any more questions for Sharon? Any comments? Shelly? Thank you. You're on mute, Shelly. Thank you. Can you call on me after this motion is over? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Somebody just got to remind me to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Sharon, any additional comments? No. Okay. Any objections to this motion? Seeing no objections, this mo are you an objection? I abstain. Okay. Oh, talking. never mind. I'll vote. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I haven't responded to the email yet. Okay. <laughs> there are no objections. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Yeah. Um, Call on Thank you. <laughs> Shelly? The prior, the motion prior to this was it pre noticed, the one that got 5 3 and a lot of abstentions? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, any other new business? I'm just checking my notes to make sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, next item is number 32, Finance Committee Report. As of February 3rd, 2023, total account balances have 3,064,000 $268.55. Did you get that, Pam? No. Three million. Sixty-four thousand. Zero six four. Two six eight. Fifty-five. Got it. What I wanted to uh, mention to the group is our long-term funds are starting to move in the corrective direction. We've had a little bit of a wild ride for the past year and a half or so. Uh, I'm sure everybody else has as well. Um, as of February 3rd, so that would be on Friday, our combined uh, long-term investments is I'll go slow, Pam. Okay. <laughs> 2,380,181.79. So in the last 14 days, the long-term investments increased over 33,000. It is so uh, up and down. As you can see um, under my examples, um, it's not taking too long for um, the accounts to 
go up as they did go down. We could see a fifteen to thirty thousand dollar swing um, in one week. So I wanted to share that with the group, not to get worried. We are not using that money to pay for anything that you all agreed to do uh, with the marketing and the SU uh, 2020 or the website. Those funds are in a market account and Aileen, Kathy and I are in the process of moving that from a market account to a sweep account. And the sweep account will pay 3% and it's readily available. Uh, we can move it as we need to. So we're taking advantage of some of the um, interest bearing accounts that are out there. So I wanted to share that with the group. The other thing I wanted to mention is, I know Kathy said at this time, we don't need to request any additional show sponsorship. We are at the request 150. However, we haven't paid out the 150 and we don't know if we're gonna to get too many more through the end of this year. Uh, they usually come in uh, pretty early. If we do uh, get additional requests, we'll come to you. Uh, it may have to be an online motion. Uh, in all the years I've been involved with handling the show sponsorship, the board has never not approved an increase to show sponsorship which is very, very good of the board to help take care of our shows. Pam? I know Region 9 is going to be coming in. Uh, we have some uh, new shows. I know they're going to be coming in before, uh, that the shows will be held before the end of the year. Before shows. the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. And they probably haven't requested anything yet, correct? Not yet. Okay. And for Region 9, um, on your incentive program, your budget is 14 and requested is 10-5. Do you yeah. know if you're going to stay within that? Uh, it, it's going to be close? So. Okay, good. So. Yeah. Even with these additional shows? Even Well, I have one additional show. It's their third show, so they're not getting anything. Right, because it's limited to two. Yeah, and um, uh, otherwise, I think, we, I think we've got it. Everything is, is within reason. Great, yeah. great. Um, I will point out in conjunction show sponsorship, we have not done anything. We haven't done anything in, uh, I think a couple of years, but it is still there. Do okay. you have something coming up? Uh, I will in October. Okay. That's, so that's keep that in mind yeah. for the budget for right. next year, right. um, because somebody may want to recommend, let's just get rid of it. Like we oh, did yeah. new show sponsorship. Um, any questions for me on the, uh, finance report? Kathy, you got any additional comments or anything? I do not. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Where are we going here next? We, it says executive session. So uh, at this time, I want to thank everybody in the audience who joined us on Facebook.